Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kim. If you're new here, thanks so much for stopping by. I hope that you'll stick around by hitting that subscribe button down below and become a part of my bookish community. So today I am here to do that tag that you've seen all over booktube for the last three or four weeks. Yes, you guessed it, the finally fall book tag. So let's get right into it. Okay, so these questions are very like long and elaborate and have these lead-ins. So bear with me, I have some good answers for you, don't worry. So the first question says, in fall, the air is crisp and clear. Name a book with a vivid setting. The first thing that came to mind when I read this question was Carval by Stephanie Garber. I do not have a copy of this book. I actually really enjoyed this series, though I didn't finish it. I read the first two books and then bought the third book and haven't read it still. So kind of like story of my life, honestly. But the first two books were really good and I read them in a weekend, like I could not put them down. This is basically about two sisters, Scarlett and Tella. And Scarlett's father has like arranged a marriage for her. Their father is pretty abusive. And so Scarlett thinks that because of this arranged marriage, she's not going to get an opportunity to go to Carval, which has been like her dream forever. And Carval is basically this elaborate performance where the audience actually participates in it. It's sort of like a game. It's really hard to describe. It's a bit fantastical, but the people that go to Carval, they basically like have to walk around and talk to people and get clues and stuff. But she finds a way to get into Carval this year. She gets a ticket from this sailor guy and her and her sister go. But as soon as they get there, Tella gets kidnapped by Legend, the guy who created Carval. And Scarlett basically has to figure out what happened to Tella by playing the game. She starts to question what's real and what's not. Even though people say that nothing that happens at Carval is real, it's just like a performance, she starts to question that. I think that the atmosphere was probably the thing I liked the most about this book because it really makes you feel like you're at Carval and it's just this really like fantastical, cool, setting that I just felt completely enveloped in while I was reading it. I think that was part of the reason I just couldn't put it down because I was just loving being in this setting. It's just, I don't know, I really enjoyed this series. I know some people were not a huge fan, but for me, I felt like it was perfectly atmospheric. The second question says, nature is beautiful, but also dying. That's really depressing. <laughs> Name a book that is beautifully written, but deals with a heavy topic like loss or grief. For this one, I chose We Are Okay by Nina LaCour. I have mentioned this before on my channel. This is a really short YA book. It's like less than 200 pages or no, it's a little more than 200, but it's a really quick read. This is a very meditative, slow story that is perfect if you're looking for something to help you reflect on the relationships in your life. And it does deal with grief. So the main character, Marin, basically left her hometown in California with nothing but her wallet, her phone, and a picture of her mother. And she goes off to college in New York. She's very alone and she stays over winter break when everyone else goes home and she's alone on campus and her friend Mabel, her best friend from home in California comes to visit her and she has to face this situation that she's been avoiding. It really is like a meditation on loneliness and grief and it's so beautifully written. I absolutely love Nina LaCour's writing in this book and it's one that I would pick up again and again because it's just such a immersive, beautiful read. The next prompt is fall is back to school season. <laughs> Not in California, we've been back at school since August. Summer is back to school season in California. Share a nonfiction book that taught you something new. So for this one, I chose The Library Book by Susan Orlean. This one I read, I think last year, and I did only give this three stars, but honestly, I don't really like nonfiction, so three stars is a pretty good rating for a nonfiction book for me. I think I just had higher expectations of this than, like I thought I was gonna enjoy it more than I did. But this one is basically about the fire that happened at the Los Angeles Public Library back in, I think it was the 80s. 
Yes, in 1986, and it talks about how they never really found the person who did that. And so it's a lot about the investigation, how the fire actually happened, how bad it was, how many books it destroyed, and how much it destroyed the Los Angeles Public Library, like the main branch of the library. And it also talks about the hunt for the person who did it and how they never really, they suspected someone, but they never really figured out who was guilty and no one was ever charged with this crime. And it also gets a lot into like how libraries work, what librarians really do, what libraries really provide for their citizens. Like it's not just books, you know, they also provide counseling for homeless people. They provide all kinds of programs, educational programs. They provide internet access and computers to people that don't have it. And so it really gets into kind of the behind the scenes of the public library system, the role that librarians play in our society and libraries play in our society. And I learned a lot about libraries from this. I obviously love libraries, but I was under the impression that aside from like getting books from them and using computers if you needed to use their computers or their Wi-Fi were the main reasons people use the library, but they actually do a lot of community outreach. And I thought that was really interesting. It helped me learn a lot about what a librarian's job actually is because for a while I thought I might wanna be a librarian. And then I learned that it's not actually just about books and I don't really wanna be a librarian anymore. So I think even though I didn't give this a super high rating, I still think it's 100% worth picking up. And I thought it was really interesting and I learned a lot of new information that I did not know before. Number four says, in order to keep warm, it's good to spend time with the people we love. Name a fictional family, household, friend group you'd like to be a part of. So for this one, I chose Looking for Alaska by John Green. So this, obviously I love John Green. <laughs> if you don't already know that, he's probably my favorite author, even though I don't think I've ever given one of his books five stars, which is weird, but I think I just always enjoy his books and I just completely admire his writing style. I think he's a brilliant writer, but anyways. Uh, this one, if you don't already know, I think everyone knows what Looking for Alaska is, but it deals with a group of four friends that go to this boarding school in Alabama. And I recently watched the show on Hulu, which just made me feel this way even more strongly, that I wish that as a teenager, I had been a part of this group of friends because they're just so supportive of each other and they do such like ridiculous fun things. Also, I always wanted to go to a boarding school when I was younger, but my parents did not have the money for that. So that was not happening. Especially when I was watching this show, I think I felt even more so, like I just wanted to hang out with these like four teenagers and be part of their group. Obviously when I was a teenager, not now, that'd be weird. Something about their friend group just feels so wholesome and supportive and fun that I would have loved to have a group of friends like that when I was in high school. The next one says, the colorful leaves are piling up. Show us a pile of colorful spines. So this isn't really a question. So I'm just going to show you <laughs> these spines. So I don't know, when I think of colorful leaves, I think of red and orange and maybe a little bit brown, but I don't really have many brown books for some reason. So I kind of put together this nice stack of red and orange books. Um, I won't go through all of them and talk about them, but uh, we have Lillian Duncan by Donna Gephardt, middle grade book, The Great Gatsby. Everyone knows what that is. <laughs> Counting by Sevens, also a middle grade book. Burn Our Bodies Down, recently reviewed this. It's a YA mystery horror book. Sort of like a rock star, which is a YA realistic fiction. And Lola and the Boy Next Door, which is probably one of my favorite reads of 2020. It's a YA romance and part of the Anna and the French Kiss series. Six says, fall is the perfect time for some storytelling by the fireside. Share a book wherein somebody is telling a story. You guys probably already know what I'm gonna pick for this, don't you? Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. <laughs> Uh, another one of my favorite reads from this year, for sure. I've already talked at length about this, so I won't continue to talk your ear off about it, but this one came to mind because obviously it's alternating between present time and the book that her father wrote. So he's literally telling a story in that there's a book within the book. Uh, if you don't already know, this one's basically 
exactly like the Haunting of Hill House show, but it's a 30 something woman who is returning to this place where she lived when she was younger. Their family fled the premises because something horrible happened there. Her dad wrote a book about it and this is like alternating between her in the present time going back to the house to see what really happened and her father's book about their experiences. Prompt number seven says, the nights are getting dark. Share a dark, creepy read. So what came to mind for this one is The Shining by Stephen King. I am new to the horror genre and so I haven't read a ton of horror, but The Shining was super creepy. Both the movie and the book are, but I had seen the movie like a million years ago. I've watched that so many times, but I had just read the book like, I think this year or last year, pretty recently I read The Shining and I thought it was just as creepy as the movie. Like the setting of The Shining is just so atmospheric and like haunted house like except it's a huge hotel so it's like almost more creepy than it just being a house and just all of the descriptions of the things that Danny was seeing when he was going through the hotel and the scenes where like the ghosts are talking to I guess we don't really know if they're ghosts or if it's like in his head but <laughs> when the main character is talking to the people in the bar and like imagining all of those scenes of like the party and stuff, everything about it is just so atmospheric. And I thought it was super dark and creepy. Like there were legit some scenes in that book that creeped me out a little bit. Uh, I guess I should tell you what this is about, even though I think everyone knows what The Shining's about, but Basically, it's about this guy who, he's an alcoholic, he's abused his son in the past, he's not a great guy, and he takes his family to this hotel in the middle of the mountains where he's gonna be like the caretaker for the hotel for the winter, and so they get really bad snow there, and they basically get snowed in almost immediately after arriving there, and they're stuck in this hotel, just the three of them. The hotel's closed down for the winter, and things start getting crazy. The uh, main character starts losing his head a bit, and things get crazy at the hotel, and the wife and son cannot escape. Number eight says, the days are getting colder. Name a short, heartwarming read that could warm somebody's cold and rainy day. God, I wish it would rain. I miss rain so much. Like I would kill for rain here because I literally don't even remember the last time that it rained. But for those of you that are experiencing cold and rainy days, <laughs> The Storied Life of AJ Fickrey. This is a book that I read a very, very long time ago and remember very little of, but I remember that I loved it. I actually read this on a plane ride from LA to New York or vice versa. I don't really remember, but I read the entire thing in a six hour flight because I like could not put it down. It was that good. From what I remember, this is basically about a guy who owns a bookstore. He's very lonely. He lives alone. His bookstore is failing. Like the sales are really bad. And one of his most prized books, I think it was a Poe collection, gets stolen or goes missing. And then someone leaves a surprise for him at his store that kind of changes things for him. I don't want to ruin anything, but it is the sweetest, cutest story. I had a smile on my face the entire time I was reading this. It was just... It's a really great one to pick up if you're looking for like a cute, uplifting story. Nine is fall returns every year. Name an old favorite you'd like to return to soon. For this one, I'm gonna say Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. I do not have a copy of this, but I did order one because I really love this series and I have the third book, but not the first and second book. Also, my kids for my book club elective are reading Truly Devious, like that was one of the choices for this month. So I think this is the perfect time. It's such a perfect fall read. If you haven't read this series yet, it's perfect to pick up in fall. And so I think I'm gonna give the first book a reread to refresh my memory and just because it has the perfect fall vibes. So if you don't know what Truly Devious is about, basically it centers around this girl named Stevie. She is accepted to this really fancy private school called Ellingham Academy in Vermont. It is not a school that you have to pay for. They basically like give scholarships or pay for the kids to attend there. 
but you have to get in, you have to apply and have some sort of like unique passion or skill or talent that helps you get into the school. And Stevie's talent or passion is that she's obsessed with true crime and she wants to be a detective. And in the 1930s, prior to the school opening back up, the founder, Albert Ellingham, his wife and child both go missing. And it's like a cold case. No one ever solved what happened to them. They don't even know if they lived. And so Stevie is obsessed with this case and she wants to go to Ellingham Academy so that she can solve this cold case that the police have not been able to solve. And so it's very murder mystery like, it's got all the fall vibes. It's a series of three books. So if you're into mysteries, I would definitely say check it out. And lastly, fall is perfect for cozy reading nights. Share your favorite cozy reading accessories. So for me, it's usually either a cup of coffee or tea. I usually go coffee if it's like warmer and I want something iced and I go tea if I want something hot. Uh, I just kind of tend to like iced coffee and hot hot tea, I don't know. And I like to light a candle sometimes to really like set the mood, especially if it's in the fall or winter. And I usually am like under a blanket unless it's too hot and then I'm not, but <laughs> yeah. I don't have anything fancy when I read, like usually a beverage is plenty. I also don't like snacking when I read because something about trying to eat while I'm reading, I just can't, I can't multitask, I can't do it. So I either have to eat or I need to read, so. That wraps it up for the finally fall buff tag. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what your answers would be to these prompts. Or if you've made your own version of this, go ahead and link it below and I'll check it out. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video.